What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another Sketchup Extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to quickly create a wood slat wall or ceiling system in Sketchup. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the Sketchup Essentials course. The Sketchup Essentials course is a course I created to give you a start to finish training in Sketchup. So we start with the basics, we move all the way into more complex topics like modeling for interior design and modeling for layout. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to take your Sketchup up training to the next level, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as a lot of you know, right now, um, wood slats are fairly popular for creating architectural interest in your project and giving variety. So when I talk about wood slats, I'm talking about like exterior slats, kind of like this one, or um, even stuff on the interiors, they can either be laid out horizontally or vertically. So um, they're used in a lot of different applications right now. And so what I wanted to do is make a quick video showing you how to use the extension slicer to make these really quickly. So um, I will link to that extension in the notes down below so you can download that. That's a free extension from TIG. And you can see that I have that loaded over here. And so what we're going to do first is let's go ahead and let's add just kind of a detail on the front side of this building so that it doesn't look quite so square. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and you can see how I have this geometry all grouped so I don't have to worry about things merging. And all I'm going to do is draw a rectangle on this face. And so when I draw a rectangle on this face, it's going to look something like this. And you can see how that kind of merges with the face and you get this Z fighting here. Don't worry about that right now. That just happens when two faces occupy the same space in 3D. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this into the thickness we want our slats to be. But before we do that, let's go ahead and double click on it, right click, and click make com or make group. So all we're doing is we're grouping our geometry in here. Well, now. We're going to double click inside that group and then we're just going to push pull this to a thickness of four inches. So if I click on this, you're going to notice that this is a solid group. That's very important that this is a solid, otherwise slicer won't work. A solid basically means that um, there's no holes in this object. So if you were to fill it with water, no water would come out if you shook it around or turned it upside down. So we have this in here as a solid now. So now we can use slicer in order to slice this up into our different pieces. The first thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna save our model. The reason for that is slicer won't work unless your model is saved. And so now what we can do once this saves, and I'm using a higher resolution texture in here so that took a little longer than maybe it should have. Um, but um, now that that's saved, we can activate slicer and we can cut this up into slices. And so in this case, we can adjust how many slices this is cut up into and also the thickness. And so you also have to set your axis that this is gonna be cut along. And you need to do this along the X, Y, or Z axis, generally speaking. There's other more complex ways you can do this as well, but generally it's gonna be one of these. I'm gonna go ahead and do this on the X axis, and then I'm gonna set my spacing to three inches, but I'm gonna set my slice thickness to two inches. That means I'll have an inch gap in between each one of these slices. And you can tell it to give you a little bit of an inset if you want. In this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to add references and I'm not going to flatten. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and click OK. You can see how what that does is that slices this up into a bunch of two inch se segments. And you may have to come in here and kind of clean this up on the ends. You may get a little extra geometry in here because it doesn't know what to do with that extra piece. So you can kind of delete that out. Usually that doesn't affect the way that this looks. You can see how I was able to really quickly create this slat wall system in here. However, I think this is a little too square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to con control Z and I'm going to undo until I get back to this box right here. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line from here to here and I'm going to push pull this across until it's level with the back side and I'm going to click. So now my shape isn't rectangular anymore, it's got more of a slope to it. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to run slicer and I'm going to cut this into slices. You can see how this gives you a lot more, um, a lot different look than was in there before. It gives you a lot more shaping than when this was just a square. And so the other thing I'm going to do is you can see how this comes in as this pink color. Well, I don't want this to be a pink color, so I'm just going to click on the outside of this and you can see how my group has been painted pink. I'm just going to go in here and select the default material and apply the default material to it. So now I can take this 
And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this using the Move tool. Whoops. And I'm going to move it out along the red axis. So activate the Move tool, click on this corner, and then tap the Control key to enter copy mode. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this object. And in this case, I'm just going to tap the M key for the Move tool. And that's going to give me these little boxes right here that I can use in order to rotate this. And so I'm just going to move this corner across, and I'm going to use inferencing to line this up. And then I'm going to move it over here along the red axis. So everything kind of comes to a corner. And you may need to do some manual work on these corners because they don't naturally um, come together maybe the way that we would want them to do. Probably the other thing I should have done before that is I should have made this into a component. But in this case, I'm not going to worry about it. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click in here. And I'm going to do a control A to select everything. And I'm going to select a wood material. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select wood. I'm just going to apply this wood veneer 01 material in here. And there's some things we could do to clean this material up. I don't want to get into that too much in this video. You can see how it looks a little bit tiled. So maybe what we'll do is we'll increase the size of this to something like 12 feet or maybe we'll decrease the size of it. Something where you don't get that tiling effect because that's all we really want for what we're trying to do here. But you can see how creating that was really easy using this extension. And then real quick, if we wanted to, we could also come in here and we could add something like this on this bottom side. So you can see how this is a rectangle down here. Well, all I did was double click inside the group and then I offset it by about four inches. And what I really want to do is I want to double click on this and I want to make another group. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to click make group. And all I'm doing is separating this geometry. And then I'm going to push pull this up about four inches. We'll click out of it. And then we can select this group that we've created. And we're going to activate slicer again. But what we're going to do in this case is we're going to select a different axis. So we're going to slice this one along the Y axis and see what that looks like. We'll leave the other settings for your spacing and your thickness and we'll click OK. So you can see how what this did is this created another slat system inside of this face. And the only thing I need to do here is it looks like I've got, whoops, it looks like I've got a face in here that I don't really want. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle across it like this. Select that face and delete it out. So you can see how what that does is that leaves me with this slat wall system. And if you want to see this a little better, you can go into your styles and turn profiles off. So you can see how you can see those a little bit better that way. But you basically have these slats all the way along here creating this system. So we can do the same thing where we apply the default material and then we go inside do a control A and we apply our wood veneer material to this underside as well. You know, and then maybe I'll play around with this and get this to drop down just a bit. Not too much, just a little, maybe two inches. And there we go. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this helpful to you? Um, have you thought of some cool ways to use Slicer? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.